Welcome to this screencast series dedicated to SQL Server 2008 programmability features. These are the Microsoft the MIU SQL Server MP, and I'm going to talk about the ADU.NET entity framework, and more specifically, how we can create an entity data model. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2008 along with uh, Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5. So I'm going to start a new project in Visual Studio. I'm selecting Windows Forms application in C Sharp. You can also use a Visual Basic application. But you have to make sure that you are using .NET Framework 3.5. Well, let's give a name to our project. And here's our project. So the first thing to do in order to use the ADO.NET entity framework is to add a new item. This new item belongs to the data category and it is ADO.NET entity data model. I'm going to use the PAPS database, uh, the sample database for SQL Server. So I'm giving a name here for my entity data model. And here uh, we are presented with two options. We can either create a new entity data model, an MP1, or we can generate a data model from a database. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So the first step is uh, to establish a connection to SQL Server. So now I'm entering here the name of my SQL Server 2008 uh, instance. Select the PAPS database, test the connection, and proceed. Okay. One important thing to know here is that uh, you have to declare the name of the entity connection uh, settings. That is PAPS entities in, th in this case. I'm going to leave this one, and uh, later on we're going to reference this uh, connection string. The next step is to select the database object to be included in the generated data model. In this demo, I'm just going to select the author's table, leave the model namespace uh, the default one, and when clicking on finish, the wizard generates the entity data model. So we can see that we have the author's entity here, along with its scalar properties. We can see the mapping details. On the left, we can see the database objects the columns of our author's table, and on the right we can see the scalar properties uh, in the author's entity. The mapping was done automatically, but uh, in more complex scenarios you can uh, modify the mappings, change it, etc. Here you can see the model browser, and you can see the entities of our model and the corresponding database objects. Okay, let's build our application. Let's continue with adding a new data source to our project. The data source type, when using the ADO.NET entity framework, uh, is object. 
And here we have to select the author's entity. Okay. Let's drag and drop our data source on the form. We'll need to add some event handling code for the save button later. So let's enable this button. Okay. And let's press F7 in order to add some code. So the first step when writing uh, our code to declare a pubs entities object. So pumps entities model at this point we are not going to instantiate this uh, object is we need to do this after the initialization of our uh, forms application. So model equals new pubs entities. Okay. The first step is to declare the data source for uh, the data grid we created uh, on the form. So we have the author's data grid view and we set it as its uh, data source model authors and we can also uh, do some sorting here order by with this pointer with the author ID let's say The last step is to add some event handle code when clicking on the save button, thus being able to post any changes on the database. So here's our event handler. And with a single s a line of code, that is model save changes, all our changes on the data they will be posted on the database. Let's build our solution, run it, you can see that we have our data here. Let's modify an entry click on save, close our form and run the application again. And here you see that uh, finally the changes were posted on the database. This was a first screencast dedicated to the ADO.NET NT framework there is more to come as there are many features in the ADO.NET NT framework allowing uh, fast and robust data access.